Hi everyone, my name is Laura. I'm one of the product managers here on Uber for Business. And today I'd love to walk you through some of the changes that we have that are upcoming on the billing CSV. These changes will be live February 1, 2019, so mark your calendars. But in the meantime, I'd love to walk you through what they are. Before we dive into the changes, you may be wondering, why are we even changing the billing CSV? Well, over the past year, we've received mounds of feedback on the CSV. Primarily, it's been difficult to reconcile kind of charges with spend given the current format. So we have decided to make just a few changes to make the reconciliation process easier for you all. So let's dive in. The first change is we've now introduced this concept of a transaction type. Now I'll actually switch over to what the new CSV looks like and show you where this change comes into play. There's also a few other changes. We'll be splitting up the transaction into its own breakdown. We've also broken down the service fee. And there are just a few more changes in this last bucket here that I'll walk you through. So now let's switch over and look at the CSV. So as you, could, as you may remember from earlier, the first change is this concept of a transaction type. Now let's take an example. Let's say I, Laura, take an Uber trip that's a $12 fare. And afterwards, I had a great experience and I want to tip my driver $5. Well, on the old CSV, we would put the fare, the $12, and the $5 tip in the same row. However, on your credit card statement, these would be two different transactions. So we've decided to make it easier and just show you um, kind of the $12 fare on one row and the $5 tip on another row to have it match your credit card statement. And the specific trans transaction type will show up here in column AB. As you can see, it can be a fare only, it can be a tip only. Sometimes it may also be a fare and tip if the transaction is bundled. Now that's the first main change. Coming back to our kind of four-step process, the second one here is the transaction breakdown. So this really takes place at the end of the CSV, where we have in column AC, first of all, we have a fare. Now on top of the fare, sometimes, and in most cases, there will be a tax that's layered on. In addition, there may be a tip that's layered on, which comes into play in column AE. Now with the addition of these three components, so the fare plus the tax plus the tip will equal the transaction amount. And now this is in the local currency where the trip took place. So if you are looking to match your credit card statement with the CSV, this is the column to focus on when you're trying to match these two things. And of course, we have the service fee breakdown that I mentioned earlier. What this means is that in the last column here in AL, for every transaction that has taken place, so in every row, we have given you an estimated service fee. Now, this is the amount that can be attributed back to this transaction. However, we're calling it estimated because we're actually not charging the service fee along with that transaction. As you can see in the last row that I'm highlighting right now, this is the actual charge of the service fee. And this will be the aggregate amount that is charged over the whole month. As you can see, the amount here is 2380 for the month. And that will be the same as the addition of all the estimated service fees. You see the little sum at the bottom, it's also 2380. We've added this column because we know some of our clients are, you know, consulting firms or law firms. And if you are charging it back to your client, it's just a little bit easier that we do the math for you. So great, we've covered one, two, and three. And in bucket four, there are just a few more changes that I'd love to go through. These are pretty straightforward. So let's go to column i and j so historically we show drop off date and drop off time in utc only and that's here in column g and h well given that we show request date and request time in the local time as well well we decided why don't we just be consistent and show both sets of kind of dates and times 
in both UTC and local time. This one should be fairly straightforward. Now let's go to column AA. We've added a column called payment method so that it's very easy to figure out which payment method was used to pay for which transaction. Now, if you're paying with a credit card, we'll show the type of the credit card, let's say Visa, for example, and we'll also show the last four digits of the credit card that was used. Now, this is only if the transaction has been paid for already, what we call pay per trip. In the other world, which is monthly billing, we will show that the transaction will be billed on a monthly basis by calling it explicitly monthly billing. And um, that should be it. Oh, one last thing. So here in column B, we'll also be explicitly calling out the exact transaction timestamp down to the millisecond. And the reason for this is we actually order all the transactions chronologically and we just want to make sure that if you are reordering based on any of the columns we give you, there is a way to get it back to the original format by using this column. So that's it. And um, just to let you know, we have all of these changes explained and laid out in the blog post. Kind of, um, it should be below this video. So take a glance if you need additional information. Again, these changes will be live February 1. 2019. We're really excited about them. And if you have any questions at all, do reach out to our support team and we'd be happy to help. Um, just for as a quick note, your historical CSVs won't be touched. So if you're doing reconciliation or reporting on those, um, there's no need to worry that those will change. Thank you so much. And um, we hope you enjoy the changes as much as we enjoyed working on them.